Queen of Holes by CSR Chapter 8 When I say a heart for a heart, I mean it literally. The twit started sniveling pathetically. I don't know. She was making me feel sick with how puny and pitiable she was. Then you better find out, I lectured. Your power would be better suited with me anyways. Someone as wretched as you doesn't deserve such potential. How? How am I just supposed to find my heart just out of the blue like this? Not my problem. I was growing irritated by her whiny voice. Until your heart is in my hands, I will rip the still beating heart out of each and every one of your relations, starting with these four. I gestured to the guards by the door to be ready to move. I decided to choose by random, but knowing that I should leave the tall woman for last, since they probably shared a close bond in a maternal or sisterly way, and I knew very well that those bonds were the most painful ones to break. Mothers would kill for their daughters. Daughters would give anything for their mothers. Sisters would always stick to each other and share everything, even pain. First, bring to me the tiny green one. Jovis! The twit squirmed so deliciously. No, please don't! No. Wait a minute. I paused as the guards had grabbed hold of him. Javis. Oh yes, I knew Javis. It was very much possible that he could still be of use to me, alive. Leave him be for later. Instead, take the unsightly tall one. No! Her pained cries filled me with pleasure as I watched tears streak her face. Uh, your majesty. The pest started. May I have a word with you? I scowled at him, for he was interrupting my fun, as I demanded. What? Well, you see... He began his idiotic ramble. Lewin, the one you had your men grab, is my baby brother, and... I cut him off, feeling ever so annoyed. Are you going to plea for his life? Maybe you would like to replace him. Oh, three, no... That's not what I was getting at at all. I just thought that you'd like to leave the ones she's more vulnerable to for last. Just to, you know, build up that anticipation and fear. And Lewin is so sweet and likable, she might be too distraught at first to respond. Very well. I turned to the guards. Never mind. Release him. Take the colorful thing instead. Don't you touch Holen! The girl screeched with authority. She stepped up, marching toward me with such dominance that I had not thought her capable of. Do not touch any of them! If you do, if you touch any of my friends, I will never give you what you want. They are all equal in my eyes. Losing one is just as painful as losing the other. So if you kill one, I will never help you. So you have something you'd like to propose? Some sort of deal? Yes! Please, just give me some time to find my heart. I'll do anything. I'll go anywhere. Whatever it takes, just don't hurt any of my friends. How long would I have to wait? Probably too long. But... You have no plan. Please! You know nothing. Jarvis! She turned to the tiny snitch. How did you find out about me? How did any of them... She slightly gestured to me. The royalty, find out. The little green man took a moment to stop fumbling about as he curled out through his lips. Well, well, uh, there was a temple. Yes. Uh, the temple of the Holy Three, to be exact, uh, governed by the high priest, Sacrados. And? He was the one who knew you to be the godchild. He had taken care of you for the first few weeks after your conception. There. She turned back to face me. I'll go to this temple. I'll talk to Socretos. I can place no trust in you. What if you plan to run away and abandon your friends? Hmm? Watching this girl's pain had reached its fun for me. 
In fact, something about this had left me feeling lewd and indecent. I felt the girl and her companions had been tortured quite enough for the night, being betrayed by the miscreant they called their own brother. Although, I knew this thinking was soft and weak, as well as very unfitting for me. There was something deep within me that wished to not see her suffer. At least, if it was not by my own hands. I almost wanted to help the girl, to make sure she got what she wanted and to see her friends go relatively unharmed. I hated myself for feeling such a way, since these thoughts betrayed everything I lived for, and most of all, it betrayed Queen Fervus. But still, I wanted to do something. Something that would help the one known as Marla. Queen, I spoke out not knowing if it was a mistake not to hold my tongue. I will go with her. What are you going about, boy? Fervus began. I will journey to the temple with the girl to make sure she doesn't run if she plans to trick you. I will find the heart and bring it straight to you. Hmm. She leaned back in her throne. Another chance? Considering that you not only found her in the first place, but got her here as well. I guess I do not need to doubt you can do this successfully. Very well. I will have a posse assembled right away. No. Now was the time for me to bite my traitorous tongue. Though I was disappointed by the seemingly witlessness of Marla, I still longed for her, shall we say, knowledge. What? Just the two of us, Your Majesty. I doubt Secretos would be willing to give us the information, knowing who I am. So, it would be wise if I was to be discreet about this. I added to the list to reassure her, and myself, why this was necessary. And besides, she'd probably be easy to manage in a smaller setting. Fine. So shall it be. Fervus seemed as though she had not suspected a thing, which was a good sign to me. You will both leave first thing. Tomorrow morning. She turned to Marla, who was scowling at me with such furious eyes, telling me how much disdain she held for me, and the position I had just put her in. And as for you, do not keep me waiting. Take too long. And the genderless thing dies. The girl looked down at the floor, rather defeated. She shot a glance back at me, then asked if I was content with what I have done. It sort of left me asking for the same question. Something didn't feel right about this. Funny, that. I had done so much worse. Stained my hands to the point that the blood took weeks to remove. Heard the tears and pleas of thousands. And yet, I was bothered by this small situation. It should have meant nothing to me. I escorted Marla out of the room while the others were taken back to the dungeon. She put up a fight, not wanting to be separated from her companions. Stop your fuss, goddess, I began. Everything will be easier if you comply. She started to let out a sob from under her breath. I took another look at the girl, this time taking in what she was wearing and how childish her hair made her look. She was wearing a pale pink sweater over a black blouse along with jeans. Her unruly hair was pulled back into two buns. How? She started. How can you be okay with doing this? This is all my life has been, goddess. This is my okay. Marla looked down pitifully. Will this kill me? To give my heart away, that is. If you have that substitute heart, I am sure it will have no real effect. Is that a lie? She then took a moment of silence as she stared up at me, looking into my eyes as though she could see into the depths of my soul. Never mind. I can tell that's something you believe, or or at least you want to. Tomorrow, we'll go to get you a change of clothes. Make sure to get plenty of rest. We will be moving non-stop except for sleep. The girl placed her face in her palms and started to scratch at her scalp in delicious frustration and sweet misery. 